This is the Holy Bro Shuriken X1 uh, racing copter. And uh, if, if you're thinking to yourself, didn't I just see a ready-to-fly racing copter on your channel just yesterday or the day before? Yes, I have several of these, actually, that I'm going to be uh, checking out. And this will culminate in a little bit of a, oh, you can't call it a roundup. There's too many in this market segment to do like a roundup with just three or four copters. But uh, if this is a segment that you're interested in and you might be making a purchase in the next, say, two weeks time frame maybe, then uh, keep watching my channel because I have a couple others stacked up that I'm going to be showing you. But today we're looking at the Holy Bro Shuriken X1. And I, I became aware of Holy Bro with the Holy Bro Shuriken 180, 190 I forget it's that little yellow copter that uh, that I did a review of and I was super impressed uh, with I, I, I didn't have super high hopes because a lot of times these sort of ready to fly super integrated uh, copters are made more for convenience and they're kind of more like toys than perf performing like proper quadcopters but no this is a legit proper quadcopter and I actually can say that with some confidence because as you can see from the props and etc. and oh oops, <laughs> suffice it to say it didn't come like that. I, I was a responsible reviewer. I took these out to the park today, uh, this one and uh, the others that I'm working with. And I actually, we set up a UTT Tsunami, the multi-GB uh, time trial track, and I raced them uh, all around the track and so i i not just uh you know a first look uh this is actually with some flight test experience under my belt so but i'm gonna save uh, the talking about the flight performance until i have shown you all of these that i have on deck and then i'm gonna do a little bit of a review slash roundup video where i talk about you know the pros and cons of each and which one i think is the best so what have we got here? Well, this is a 200 millimeter frame. So it's a little bit bigger than many uh, pure X's would be. Many of them will come in around 190, which is about as close as you can get before the props start touching. You can see there's a fair amount of maybe a centimeter of space there between the props. These are not the stock props that come on it. It comes with Mr. Steel branded red HQ 5x4x3 props. They, uh, I love 5x4x3 props, especially when they are paired with, yes indeed, 20. 600 kV motors, which I I just I've been playing with 23, 2400 kV motors over the last couple months, just trying to you know make sure that I'm not just so set in my ways that I'm missing out on something good, and I'm starting to think that no no that's where I like to be anyways, and the slightly higher kV motors. So there's 2600 kV motors and. Uh, HQ 5x4x3 props and for those of you who are familiar with HQ props you'll know that's why they're not on the copter anymore because they all broke they broke like potato chips <laughs> HQ does make durable props now uh, but this did not come with the durable props these were just the standard HQ 5x4x3 Mr. Steel signature edition and um, they didn't they didn't last long they break really easily so the next thing you're going to ask me is, well, what props are those? And these are Dow. They have a name, but this is the T5045C. Got an interesting profile here. And I don't, I'm not ready to do a full review of it, but it flew pretty good. I haven't really tested, you know, the tunability and thrust and all that nonsense. But yeah, I didn't hate it. So there you go. There's a little quick look at that. <laughs> Has nothing to do with this copter. The ESCs on the copter are BL Heli S and the back of the box says they're rated for 30 amps. But, uh, you know, I don't I don't think you're going to pull 120 amps. Maybe if you put a heavy prop on here, maybe so. So yeah, so 30 amps rated uh, ESC 40 amp burst. If you believe that, I'm... I'm a little skeptical, but uh, whatever. 30 amps is fine. 20 amps is probably fine. And the whole rest of the copter is this completely integrated main board. So this is the flight controller, the video transmitter, the, the receiver, free sky receiver, everything all in this main board. And that is something that you're either going to love or you're going to hate. The upside is that there's no soldering. There's no nonsense. Uh, you just take it out of the box. You put the props on it, put the antenna on it, and you basically go. In fact, it actually even came out of the box with props on. If yes, they made the box big enough. It can ship with props on. But the downside is that if you damage any part of these electronics, uh, you, you basically are buying a whole new mainboard. The good news is that... Holy Bro have done the smart thing. Can you see there that there is a carbon fiber plate here and then the circuit board? So the circuit board is not, strictly speaking, structural. 
Although, you know, it will take stress in a crash because that carbon fiber plate is only so stiff. But they haven't done the thing that some manufacturers would have done, which is use this carbon fiber plate as the top plate. And then, of course, it would, it would, break, it would break really quickly. The other thing that the sort of nerdy engineers in me loves is that Holy Bro gives you a full schematic and pinout for the board. Fantastic. And they give you a full parts list if you need to replace any parts. And that includes the main board. Now the next thing I did as a responsible reviewer is go over to my computer and try and look up this main board to see how much it would cost you if you did have to replace it and I couldn't find it for sale anywhere. I got literally no Google search results for Hollybro 11024 main board. So uh, in theory, you can order this, but finding a supplier may be tricky. And uh, how much is it? I don't know. Setting aside the question of whether a fully integrated main board is a good or a bad thing, uh, I am super impressed with, with Holybro's overall approach to the design of the copter. It is very well thought out, and, and I didn't find any dumb or annoying things about it. For example, here is the bootloader. You can't see that. For example, here is the bootloader button. Look, you can just reach down with your finger and press it. You don't need a screwdriver. You don't need a prongs or a tweezers. There it is. Here is the bind button for the receiver. You can just reach in there with your finger and press it. Very nice. This is the jack where you can plug in an FTDI adapter uh, to flash the OSD. So this connects the OSD. You don't have to do faffing about with USB con conflicts with the, with the flight controller and so on. You can plug your FTDI adapter in here and it ships with, where is it? It ships with a little header that you can plug in there that you can hook up to your FTDI adapter, so you're good to go. And it's little thoughts like that that make me impressed with Holy Bro and, and think of them as not just another sort of, like if you look at Iashin, right? And I'm not here to dog on Iashin. Iashin is what it is. And some of the things Iashin makes are good and they certainly do come in at a price. But you look at many Iashin products and you go, you were so close, but then you screwed up these little details and it sort of ruined the whole thing. And you look at the Holy Bro products, and I've seen two of them now, and in each case, it's very thoughtful. It, it, there are very few sort of dumb mistakes that make me hate the product and many, many things they got right. Here's another thing they got right, and no, I don't mean the glaringly <laughs> bright LEDs. Uh, these LEDs are programmable, though, and you can go into the Clean Flight or Beta Flight programmable LED whatever configurator and make it do things like flash left when you turn left or get brighter when you raise the throttle. Fully programmable. Thank you, Tyrannus. Uh, the other thing I was going to say they got right is here in the... Thank you, Tyrannus. Let me just move you over here. Thank you, Tyrannus. The other thing they got right that I was going to show you is that for the uh, channel and frequency, there's a one button here for the frequency and one button here for the channel. You don't have to hold them down. Two, you don't have to press them two times in a pattern in order to change the channel and in a different pattern to change the band. You just push the button and you change the band. You push the button and you change the frequency. And it's just that freaking simple. And look, F, F, you're on band F. There's no band one, two, three, or four. It's just band F, channel one. Oh, why? Why is that so hard, people? Also, they included a beeper. I like that. I think a beeper is very useful on a copter. It's useful for um, it's useful for finding your copter when you've crashed in the grass. It's useful for knowing when your copter has armed and when your gyro has calibrated. And if you do black box, it is useful for uh, for for knowing when the black box log started. You can see on top here there's a flat spot for mounting your GoPro. Uh, it is sized for a GoPro session, and in fact, the copter even comes with a TPU printed GoPro session mount. Fantastic. It has cutouts for the battery strap to go through like this if you're one of those who wraps it around like that, or to go through like this if you're one of the ones who uses something like a, a front plate like this. You know, however you want to do it, it's very nice and easy. The camera comes uh, just sort of friction fit 
to hold the up tilt. The up tilt is adjustable. Uh, I didn't like the friction by itself because I, I want the up tilt to stay if I got a hard landing or something. I find it a little hard to adjust to a different up tilt. It takes me a pack or two. And if the up tilt's constantly changing, I'm constantly trying to get used to the way the copter's flying. So I just put a couple pieces of foam tape in with some, um, some uh, zip ties. A clever thing, if I do say so myself, that I did, it wasn't easy to figure out a way to get the zip tie to sort of go all the way around. So I just stuck one zip tie down in and you can see that it's just the size of this slit is just holding the zip tie, right? So I just stuck it down, wrapped it around and then stuck another one on the end and cut it off. And that's how I've sort of got it belted underneath there to hold the angle. The angle it can go to is, I'm at like 45, I think I might be at like 50 degrees here. I'm, I think I'm past 45 and it can go significantly higher. So if you want to, you can go to over angle there. It also has a slot cut if you decide to put a camera in like a Runcam Swift that has a second um, second screw to hold the angle. So that's another way you could go. The camera that it comes with, um, it is 1177 size and form factor. It's got a lens on here. It's got a flat front, but a great big, I'm not sure I recognize the lens at all. My first thought was that it was like a GoPro lens, but the actual lens element is much smaller. I believe it's 2.1 millimeter, but don't hold me to that. Uh, and it's acceptable. I found that the uh, the dynamic range was acceptable and the exposure was acceptable. Sometimes it was annoying that the exposure would visibly get brighter and dimmer and brighter and dimmer while I was flying, but at no point did I ever get that annoying CMOS thing where the ground just goes to shadow and becomes black. So I, I if you wanted to upgrade this copter, you might think about putting a slightly better camera on it, but the camera that it comes with is okay. The antenna it comes with is, um, actually, it's fine. I don't know what they got going on here with this. This almost feels like rubbery. It doesn't feel like the coax you usually find here. Um, it feels tough, I guess. The cap popped off. I have it somewhere. Maybe even in my, I don't know where I have it. So I'm going to super glue that back on. and It'll be okay, but I, you kind of expect that to happen. Uh, the antenna location, my first thought was that I didn't like it hanging out there. But in retrospect, or on second thought, I think that it's probably going to be okay because how is anything going to swipe and tear that off? I mean, obviously, <laughs> anything can happen with a crashing quadcopter, right? But a branch coming in from the front is going to hit the arm. Coming in from the side, I don't know. You'd really have to... That's fine. That's going to happen. But I think the whole, you know, getting swiped off at the base thing is reasonably well protected from there. The most annoying thing about the antenna was that when I put my Xiaomi Yi on there, the most annoying thing was that it actually sort of got in the way. You can see, oh, that's upside down even. It got in the way of the antenna, and it was a little hard to get the antenna out of the way. Not, a, not an insurmountable problem, but a little annoying. It was clearly designed with the GoPro Session in mind, which is a much, uh, much more narrow camera. It's got MWOSD on it. Uh, standard MWOSD comes pre-calibrated and set up with voltage and current. Thank you, monitoring. Uh, you know I love it. And of course, the ability to change PIDs and all that nice stuff in flight. 348 grams, 349 grams, 348 grams without the battery. Um, so pretty respectable weight. The other thing I know you want to know about is the flight characteristics. And I'll tell you on paper, this copter has the things I like, the 2600 kV motors, right? That's in the in the 5x4x3 props. Uh, I am going to hold off telling you about the flight characteristics until I show you some of the other copters in this sort of mini roundup. Uh, and I'm going to show you a tuning video for this copter. Something happened in my tuning session for this copter that has never happened before. Haha, <laughs> teaser. So I'm going to hold off talking about flight characteristics for now, but... I think you can start to see that this is a pretty nice package, especially at the price of $300. $300 with the FreeSky XSR receiver pre-installed, different price with different receivers, as low as I think $270, depending on which receiver you get put in it. So uh, $300 bucks and it's a pretty nice, it's a pretty nice, well put together, well thought out uh, kit. So that's going to do it for this first look at the Holybro Shuriken X1. If you haven't watched my video on the Quad Questions QQ190, which is a copter that is in a similar segment as this one, go ahead and watch that stuff. Look for more videos about this copter, the QQ190, 
and other similar copters in this segment coming up over the next couple weeks. And uh, within, I would say, more than one, but less than two weeks from now, we'll see a final roundup of all of the copters. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.